Hi, this is Miss Sabatelli. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about word choice and diction. We're going to ask ourselves the question, how do words affect readers? We're going to try to understand how an author chooses words and uses words to help us as readers become involved in the text. How does the author use words to shape our understanding? First, let's talk about word choice. The words that an author uses can help make the story or article exciting and interesting to read or kind of make it dull and boring. Some things to consider when an author does make good word choices are applying strong verbs. Is there a reason why an author would use scurry instead of run? They select striking words or phrases. Do they sound good when they're read out loud? Can you read it excitedly and with expression or sadly with expression? The author will also use specific and accurate words. They want to help the reader see what they're talking about. This is that reading strategy that we've talked about called visualization. Good writing can help good reading. And then lastly, does an author choose words that deepen the meaning? Does it help capture a reader's imagination? Can we paint vivid, clear, and exciting mind movies and visualizations in our head? Let's take a look at some examples of both dull word choices and exciting word choices. In this first example, you'll notice the dull word choice still gets the idea across. Catherine felt bad for what she had done. When we use more descriptive language and exciting words, it might read a little better. Catherine hadn't slept in days. Every time she closed her eyes to sleep, images of that night flickered on and off like a short circuit while waves of guilt came with nausea. In the exciting word choice, as a reader, I'm prompted to want to read more of the story because now I have some questions about why she's not sleeping. Have you asked yourself, what's diction? We've talked about word choice. Well, diction is another way to say word choice. It's going to look at your grammar and figurative language and word usage. Word choice is important for when you're establishing tone as a writer. A writer's attitude towards the subject matter is called tone. There are three different types of diction I want to talk to you about today. Formal, informal, and technical. We're going to start with formal and informal. These are the types of diction that you probably are most familiar with. When we talk about a formal diction, we have an author, or we ourselves as writers, are complex and thorough in explaining the main idea, supporting details, and having a good conclusion. There's usually longer, complete sentences within the paragraph. Full words are used with no contractions or abbreviations. So we don't make anything short when we write formally or read something that's formally written. Formal diction avoids personal pronouns such as I, we, or mine. Formal diction is not a personal writing style. It's very objective and to the point. Different from that is the informal style. Informal is very conversational. We can use slang or figures of speech like you betcha or uh, can't. Informal is both personal and emotional. You're going to use those personal pronouns such as mine, I, or we. Informal writing speaks directly to the readers or the audience. It uses words like you and yours. The writing is often very short sentences and sometimes incomplete. There's use of contractions and abbreviations when writing informally. 
When we think about different types of writing, formal writing would be essays that you're doing for college or any school work that you turn in. And informal writing is texting to a friend or writing a personal email. Technical writing is a type of writing that explains complex ideas and gives you a lot of information so that you as a reader can understand it. Usually the goal of technical writing is to get you to perform a task. Technical writing includes instruction manuals, business proposals, directions, scientific reports, contracts, and user guides. When writing anything, you really need to know your audience. Are you writing to a teacher? Are you writing so that a toddler or a younger sibling would understand it? Are you writing so that just your friends know what you're talking about? Or are you writing to impress an employer? There are many different types of audiences that we write for throughout our lives. Think about the audience of the rattlesnake hunt as you read. What type of diction will you find there? Will it be technical? Will it be formal or informal? You actually might find a little bit of all three in her type of writing. Today we're going to wrap things up with our essential question that we asked in the beginning of the lesson. How do words affect readers? Well, as you read something, it's important to know the author's word choice and diction to understand the text. Are they using descriptive words to help you paint a picture in your mind and use a visualization strategy? Is it written formally so that you know it's business? Or is it written informally, like a friendly letter or a note? Knowing an author's word choice and diction can help us understand the text as we read.